to the Western world. Leap ahead about 50, 60 years. We're in now in the middle of the, of the 20th century, the 1950-1960. Now we have many more that are known at that time. In the plant area, you have uh, DMT, for example, uh, found in many plants. DMT is, a, is, a, is not acting orally, but in certain actions in snuffings and, and injections and are using medical tools and object, object smoking. Uh, many plants are now known to have DMT as a principal alkaloid. Actually, DMT, uh, dimethyltryptamine, uh, was first synthesized in the, the early 1930s by Mansky in Canada. Had no idea of its pharmacology. Pharmacology was unknown. It's not until the early 1950s that it was found to be a component of one of the, of the snuffs of South America. And from that, it suddenly became a, a, a point of, of medical exploration. Um, there was the uh, C. Zara, who is a, a chemist I, knew, I know quite well, he's still alive, and NIDA, who went into this and synthesized the, the said the dimethyltryptamine, the diethyltryptamine, the propyltryptamine, the butyltryptamine, kept making the change longer and longer. He discovered that the others, the longer chain ones, were early active, and he explored four or five of these compounds and published on this information. He also made a dialyltryptamine, but he never explicitly told how he made it. It's an interesting story there, I'm going to get into it. Um, but he uh, had uh, uh, made the compounds, had found their biological activity, he found that anything larger than DMT was orally active, and as you got larger and heavier, you got less and less potent. So that was the first contribution synthetically in this, in this whole area. There is the uh, area that was talked about some yesterday of psilocybin, psilocybin, the mushrooms, the active mushrooms, the shrooms that they call them in the, in the United States in the, in the slide. Where you have uh, the psilocybin cubensis, the uh, uh, work of Gordon Wasson of trying to bring uh, bringing the mushrooms back into the, into the uh, United States from, from the Oaxaca area, the Ibero Indian, uh, Indians, right, of the uh, Oaxaca area. And this led to uh, work of, uh, was done, much of it was done uh, by, by Hoffman, of the synthesis of psilocybin, of psilocin, and in Sandoz laboratories where they worked, they had made uh, the uh, diethyl, I believe the dipropyl, I know the diethyl homolog. And these materials are orally active, they're the components of the mushroom, and uh, they had made the psilocin, which is the de-esterified compound, and the nn diethyl. There are another plant source in this middle of, of this last century were what are called MGS, morning glory seeds. Morning glory seeds became quite popular. No one knew quite what they were. These from, again, from Mexico, uh, the uh, Ipamia violacea, you have the uh, Hawaii, the baby Hawaiian wood rose, Argeria nervosa. These are materials that contain iridot alkaloids in them, but no one had worked out exactly what was in them and why they were biologically acting. But a great popularity sprung forth in the, I believe it was the early, late 1950s, early 60s, of consuming handfuls of Argeria, spoonfuls of the, uh, of the uh, Ipamia, uh, handfuls of seeds, maybe 100 seeds or 200 seeds for a, for a trip. These are the plant sources. At this time, there were also a number of synthetic materials that came forth in the market, on the market, into the scientific community, I should say, in the area of psychedelic drugs. The major initiator of the synthetics were the Hoffman's work on LSD. Uh, LSD was first uh, synthesized, I believe, in 1938, and it was not known to be active, to, no, no searching for active, they were looking for other things in Sandoz. And it was about five years later, in the 1943, I believe it was, that Hoffman, they say accidentally, we don't know, he, he would not use any term other than accidental, uh, got exposed to a small amount of it in him. And the experience, of course, is famous for the bicycle ride and the, uh, uh, the popularization and the uh, making widely known in the scientific community and the medical community the intense potency of, of LSD as a compound. Uh, LSD is uh, active, as you, well, as you know, as many people know, uh, 50, 100, 150 microgram levels. He had synthesized at that time about four or five other materials. Uh, the isomers that were not active, but he made the N-methyl, the 1-methyl, the 2-methyl, the 1-2-bromo compounds, 
that had biological activity, and perhaps there are a total of four or five compounds made at Sandoz that were uh, known to be biologically active or had been explored biologically. Another material that was first explored in Canada, an outgrowth synthetically in Bessemer, uh, explored in Canada as ways of interfering with, with uh, the, the visual effects of, of uh, a spinning wheel that had lights and colors on it. And they tried to use this as a way of distorting the color sense, material called TMA, trimethoxyamphetamine. This is mesmin with a method group hooked onto the alpha position. So it's really an amphetamine chain, and uh, it was called TMA by the people of Canada. And I had made compound two, I called it TMA. In my case, I was looking at it as having mesmin like action. And it is indeed about twice as potent as mesmin. And uh, it's a the basis for which I made a number of compounds. If one carbon it makes it better, the two and three and four should be better, better, better. I made it up to about eight, carbon, eight, com, eight carbons, and only the one carbon was the active with all the rest are totally uninteresting. But in any of it, uh, TMA in this area was the first of the synthetics that followed the general area of investment. Also a person down in Los Angeles at the University of California, UCLA, Gordon and Alice, had made the compound, the uh, basic amphetamine compound, with a methylene doxy group on it called MDA. And it was patented by, I forget the company, patented by someone as an appetite suppressant, which indeed it was, but it never went commercial because it turned you on. And that was not the thing you wanted a pharmaceutical company wanted their product to do. So the whole area was dropped. But it was patented as, a, uh, as an anorexic. And uh, it was uh, a second note at that time. One other thing in the same area, about 1950-something, uh, both Gordon Alice in Los Angeles and I had made a material we called MMDA, methoxymethylene doxyamphetamine. The interesting story there is that he had made the material, I knew that, and he knew that I had made the material. We both had not determined its activity yet, but we were going to do so, and we planned to meet uh, in January of the year. It turns out in the end of November of the previous year, he died an unexpected death. And uh, it died happened of a diabetes, diabetes uh, problem. And he was a pharmacologist who had worked out the use of insulin against diabetes problems in general. And uh, that he should die of this problem, I found him very, very challenging, very mysterious. Because he was also working on tryptamines, as I was working on tryptamines, and I had this fantasy that he had gotten into a tryptamine that was very lethal. And he, I would like very much to have met him before he died to find out what he was working on so I could stay away from that particular area. And we never, communication was never established. But we did have, he was, he was and I were the earlier studies of M MDA, uh, the methoxy amphetamine. And uh, that is the, that's basically what was known in the 1950s. And total of all these compounds I'm talking about adds up to perhaps uh, 20 compounds. So now let's take ahead to the present day where we are now. We're now 50 years later yet. The number of plants have really become quite a bit more extensive. Not at the same growth as before, but still quite real. Uh, many cacti have become active on the scene. Uh, uh, everyone knows, uh, most people know about the uh, many examples of upstairs. The well-known uh, Sacred Pedro, the uh, Trachycerus pachinoi. There are many Trachycerus cactus that have been explored. Uh, most of them analytically and chemically, but some of them in human trials. And the number of cactus that contain mescaline is in excess of 50. There are actually 50, or apparently known about 55 cactus species that contain mescaline. <coughs> uh, other cactus from I've worked with in the, uh, in the uh, outside of the Trichocerus. You have Trichocerus I saw upstairs, the Macadonis, you have uh, the Terchechii, Various variants of Trachycerus, very rich. Uh, well, the Trachycerus samples is a good one I got from uh, the northern part of Argentina, northwestern Argentina, in which the uh, Trachycerus has, I ran its analysis on it, the major alkaloid is N methyl mescaline, interestingly. A compound extremely similar, it has the same relationship to 